A former Russian deputy defense minister has been arrested on corruption charge amid the ongoing purge within the country's military top brass. Dmitry Bulgakov who served as the deputy defense minister 15 years is suspected of embezzlement in large amount, according to preliminary investigation. The former military official was detained by the Federal Security Service FSB, on Friday and placed in Lefertovo prison in Moscow. If found guilty, Bulgakov will face up to 10 years in prison. TASS news agency reported, with reference to law enforcement agencies that Bulgakov lobbied for the interests of Gryazinsky food plant, and a system was created for supplying Russian troops with low-quality dry rations at an inflated cost, as a result of which military personnel did not receive high-quality food prior and during the war in Ukraine, TASS reported. In addition, Bulgakov lobbied for the signing of contracts for the Ministry of Defense with certain commercial structures, for which he received bribery. Bulgakov, 69, served as Deputy Defense Minister from 2008 to September 2022 and was in charge of military logistics. He was widely blamed for the Russian army's logistical failures during the early months of the Kremlin's full-fledged invasion of Ukraine that stalled Russia's advances. One tank for 15 kilometers. Ukrainian general explains why Russians broke through border in Kharkiv. On May the 10th, Russian troops launched their second major offensive on Kharkov during the war and were able to advance several kilometers from the border in the first days and even hours. Among the reasons for this is the acute shortage of forces and resources of the 125th Territorial Defense Brigade, which defended this direction, former Brigade Commander Lieutenant General Artur Gobenko said in an interview with Pravda Media Outlet. Active actions by the enemy began in the morning. It was a massive fire strike, artillery, missile strikes, aviation. At the same time, the Russians were using powerful electronic warfare systems. The enemy began an offensive along almost the entire line of contact, which our brigade was defending, he recalls. According to Gobenko, the brigade's defensive line was 44 kilometers long from the Travianskoy Reservoir on the left bank of the Seversky Donetsk River on the right. This line was defended by four understaffed battalions, three had just emerged from heavy fighting in the Donbass, while the fourth had no combat experience at all. The Vinitsa battalion was the most fully staffed, just over 70%. My two regular battalions were 60% full, and the 415th rifle battalion was only 50% full, he said. The general claims that the battalion's subordinate to him actually had no heavy weapons, only a battery of 82mm mortars in the TRO battalions and a platoon with two mortars in the rifle battalion. The only thing we had to reinforce us was five guns and three tanks. This was one gun that was supposed to cover 10 kilometers and one tank that was supposed to cover 15 kilometers. The battalions did everything possible and impossible, but holding the front when you have six to eight people per kilometer is simply unrealistic, explains Gobenko. According to the officer, his units recorded the accumulation of enemy forces near the border and this information was passed on to the higher command. The decisions we made to conduct a defensive battle must be confirmed by the number of forces and resources that were at the disposal of the brigade commander. They were insufficient to hold the defense during such an offensive, Gobenko notes. The general is particularly outraged that in the public space, all the blame for the failure of the first day of fighting is being placed on the 125th Brigade. Moreover, there are also problems in the Volchansk direction for which, as he claims, the brigade was not responsible. He notes that the brigade defended the Lipsy area while Volchansk lies much further to the east. Lipsy, Glubako, Staritsa, that is Lipsy, Glubako were the left flank, Staritsa was the right, behind it was the Seversky Donetsk River, and this was no longer my area of responsibility, but they piled everything on the brigade and they let the enemy break through in the direction of Volchansk and abandoned their positions and ran away. The general is indignant 